If Logic Pro is your software of choice, this video is gonna help you out. So definitely save this one, all right? We're gonna dive into some production, composition, workflow, mixing, mastering tips in Logic Pro in 10.8.1, the latest version of Logic Pro. I'm Bradley Denniston, this is Radium Records, and this is the mixing series. Let's dive right into the first tip. This is one that I use all the time in every single session, just so I can visually get around the session as quick as possible and be super efficient with production, mixing, recording, recording, whatever I'm doing. So there's two places to mess around with color in Logic Pro. One is the region-based coloring right here. If you hit option C, just know that that's going to override the track coloring. So if I highlight this region here, all of a sudden I'm in the region color box. If I go back over here, I'm not in the track color box. As you can see, we're still highlighting on the region. You have to unhighlight the region to get back to the track color box. Little bit confusing, a little crazy, but Hopefully this will help you navigate and see what's going on in your session really quick so you can move fast. My second massive tip for you, which I use in every single session because I do not want to start 100% from scratch on most songs that I'm working on, especially when I'm doing sync licensing stuff, I'm writing to briefs that are funk pop briefs. And I've already written six to 12 tracks in the funk pop genre. Why would I start a whole new session and have to build all my tracks from scratch? That'd be kind of stupid, right? We're talking about efficiency in this video. So here's what you want to do to be more efficient. You can hit F on your keyboard and that's going to open up your files on the right side here of the screen, as you can see. And on my bookmarks tab, I've bookmarked all of my sessions, all my samples, whatever else, right? So I could get to them quickly. But if I go into my projects, I can double click on any of my project logic files and open open up the actual file right here with all the tracks individualized and start to import session data from those tracks. So if I know that I'm making kind of an indie Motown pop kind of vibe right now, and I've done that before, I might want to double click on the session open it up and bring in different channel strips and presets that I've already made in other sessions. For example, maybe I'm gonna play a guitar in this one and I want to bring in this guitar preset of all the plugins I have here, but I don't wanna necessarily bring in the actual guitar. I can just click on the guitar channel here and you could see you could bring in just the plugins. So I'm gonna click on the plugins and I'm going to sit, hit add. Now when I add that, it's going to open the channel as a channel strip preset with the plugins that are on there, the bias amp two, the SSL, etc. And now I have an actual channel strip right here for my guitar, which is the Bias 2, the SSL EV2 channel, and looks like Spring from Waves or Eventide. So now I can just plug in a guitar and I got a preset ready to go that sounds like a Motown retro kind of vibe. I don't need to build this from scratch, which is a great way to do it. Import session data. Another way I use this is I go into maybe drums that I've built out. I've programmed like these drums, these samples that I brought in from Splice and my hard drive. And I'm like, yo, I wanna use that same kit that I used on that one song. No problem, right? Just go into the session and find those drums and you can start to import everything from those drums, which is really cool. So for example, if I wanna bring in the content as well, I just click this content box. Now these don't have content on them because they're samplers and stuff. But if you go into anything that has content, like these instruments that have MIDI content, right? You can see here, this is a Trillion Fender and a Clap, Oliver Clap sample. If I hit content here, I can bring in the content and the plugins, and then I can add that. And now I'm going to get the actual sounds, the MIDI, the audio, or whatever else was on those channels with the plugins as well. And there you go. There's the Trillion Fender bass, and you can see the MIDI patterns, but that's a great way to import session data, import different sounds. Maybe you made a vocal channel strip, or you made your own sample. You're like, ah! Barry, what happened to you? And you did like a delay thing and it was really cool and you wanna use it in another session that you're producing, just do this. Hit F on your keyboard, open up your files finder and go to your session, double click on the logic file and it'll open up everything in your session. Hopefully that's really helpful. If it is, you better drop a comment, show some love. Next tip I got for you is a mixing tip and this is one that actually I didn't know about for so long in Logic. I've been brave. And I couldn't figure out why there were so many options to do this thing. And we're talking about side chaining here, right? In Logic, it's much easier than a lot of DAWs to side chain something. So I have this kick down here and I wanna show you exactly how to do this without sending an AUGS or making a new bus or whatever else it is, right? Let's call this track kick and we're going to side chain it with the bass. All right, so let's listen to the track with just drums and bass. And I think I plugged a vocal in here as well. I got my head up in a all 
right, so drums and bass. Let's say every time the kick hits, I want to make room for it with the bass and the kick because they're both kind of sharing the same frequencies in the low end. It's very, very simple in Logic Pro. Let's open up a Soothe 2 or whatever you want to use for ducking. It could be a multiband compressor, an EQ. I really don't care what you use. And there's many ways to do this, so I won't go in to a bunch of detail on side chaining in this video. I'm just showing you the workflow, okay? So let's go into Oak Sound and we'll go to Soothe 2. So in Soothe 2, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just give the low end and this filter here, just down to about 500 or so, right? And I want to hear the side chain on this, okay? So we have to turn on the side chain. And the next step is to come up to side chain and pick your track. Now, in a lot of DAWs like Pro Tools, you would have to go to this kick, you'd have to make a send, You'd have to bus it over to bus two. You'd have to relabel that send. You'd have to mute the return of that send because it makes a return track as well. And it's just a mess, right? But in Logic, you can go, okay, that's the kick track. Let's go to the side chain and let's go to audio and let's go to kick. Bam, now we've side chained it. Very simple. Now you are actually hearing the side chain of whatever plugin you use, whether it's a Logic Pro stock plugin or a third party plugin like Soothe 2. So that's a great way to side chain and let's just see it in action with the bass and this kick drum. And bada bam, we're moving, we're side chaining, we're doing all sorts of cool stuff. And that's a big thing that helps Logic stand out for electronic music production. Logic Pro does a lot of great things like this quickly, especially with automation and things like that. And it's just really easy to use like you don't have to be sending and doing all these patchwork things. So hopefully you like that tip and that's going to help you just really save a lot of time with your mix. When you just go to sidechain, just pick the track. You don't need to go to bus, you don't need to send, you don't need to turn the send up, etc. Last tip I got for you, and this is a really, really golden one because I hear a lot of producers and a lot of artists in their music, there's something wrong with the groove usually. And they can't pinpoint it and they don't know how to lock in grooves and how to quantize properly in Logic Pro. And I'll tell you, the biggest thing you can do is create groove templates and swing templates and use your markers and flex time. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that right now, baby. Let's go, let's go, Let's go, let's go, let's go. So we got this kick drum. I layered it in on this actual break, which is just a loop, right? If we're hearing this, I'm just gonna solo it. This is the drum loop. You can hear it's got swing. It's holding back notes and it's do, ku, do, do. You know, it's kind of lazy. It's got a feel to it, a vibe to it. So if we zoom way in, which if I hold down my control and option, I'm going to use my magnifying glass and I'm going to click and drag. And you can see this hit is ahead of the beat here, right? Even more, it looks like. And you would think, dude, you're in the wrong BPM. No, this is a 120 drum loop and we're at 120, but this one's behind. As you can see, the first hit is kind of behind the groove. So it's actually grooving and swinging. Now, how do we do this and make this really work with our bass and everything else? Because I played a bass in and here's how that sounds. That is like perfectly locked. How did I do that? How did that happen? Here's how I did it. The first step is you're gonna select the drum loop itself. You're gonna go to quantize and you're gonna go to make groove template. Now, before I do that, usually with make groove template, because you can do this this way, but it may not be perfect. It may not be super precise. So a precise way to do this and the way that I prefer to do it, and hopefully you guys start using this because I've been using Logic Pro for over 18 years, which makes me super old. <laughs> but if you hit option F here, you're gonna open up your flex time lane. I always find that the polyphonic auto, the polyphonic flex time usually is the best. Okay. So use the polyphonic, turn it on, and then you'll see your markers here kind of outlined. The next step is to double click that. It's going to open up in your file editor. And then over here, you can see this little tiny tab here. That's your marker transient editing mode. All right. Turn that on. It's very simple. Now you can see every single marker and where the groove's happening and you can even hit play and you're only gonna hear the groove. Now, if I'm gonna make a groove template out of this, 
here's a big thing. Why would I want that fill to happen when my bass groove is not going do 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 do? You know, it's not doing like sixteenths or triplets or anything like that. So on this little fill part, I'm going to get rid of this by just double clicking and getting rid of that marker itself. And now I'm sticking to more of an eighth note feel. If I have that in, I just undid it. It's more of like a triplet or sixteenth feel, and it might confuse the actual groove, right? And there's other ways to do this as well. You could just hit minus here until you get rid of the markers you don't want. Maybe you just want it on the kick and the snare and not the hi-hat pattern, right? So there you go, kick, snare, and you can see it removed all the hi-hats. There's one sneaky one here, double click it, get rid of it. But this is how I do it, I'll zoom out and you can see exactly where all the markers are. I'm gonna hit plus again until I get all the markers back and I'm just gonna get rid of this little 16th note fill thing, okay? Because I don't want it to trip up my groove template. So I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna get, yep, that's it. Now let's check this out and let's hear it. And there's one sneaky one that got away this hi-hat pattern here, right? You can see this little hit here. So if you wanna just add a marker, now all you have to do to add a marker here is hold down command, you'll get your pencil tool, and you just click there and you're gonna get your marker. So if that's not precise, as you can see, like the hit is kind of happening here, you can hold down option and drag this and you can get it more precise, bam. So now we're all locked in, what do we do next? Our next step is let's get out of that and let's go back to our region here, which is the drums. And let's go up to quantize now because we've really set our markers how we like them. And we're gonna go to the very bottom and we're gonna hit make groove template, okay? Now that groove template is going to be in our quantize tab and it's not saved on a global scale in all your sessions all over the place. It's only saved in this session, which is a super bummer. And I think Logic needs to change that. Note to Logic Pro and Apple, change that. If I make a groove template, it should carry over to every single session i should at least have the ability or option to do that but right now it just kind of sticks with the session which is kind of lame but whatever that's what we get okay now you can see the groove templates in there now let's just apply it to the base after we go through the same steps you hit option f right double click on the thing make your markers right i've already done all this turn it on make all your markers make sure they're on the hits that you want to quantize right and then you can have that highlighted, go to quantize, and you can see I already have selected that groove and I'll apply that groove to this bass. Now, if I zoom way in, you can see that all the bass hits are locked into the kick, the snare, the hi-hats. And now we have this like really grooving, like perfectly locked in tempo, beat, and it's just immaculate. <laughs> right? This is what you gotta use. And now we're locked in and now the bass and the groove is solid. And that's something I hear a lot in amateur records where it's like the bass isn't pocketed with the drums. And if you don't have your foundation right, whatever you lay on top is gonna sound like garbage. <laughs> it's just the way it is. People are gonna be like, what's wrong with this track? So hopefully these tips helped you. And if you're using Logic Pro, definitely pick up my free Logic Pro session tutorial. I take you through a bunch of stuff. It's got channel strip presets for free in there. It's right there link in the description and it's totally free you guys if you want to buy the logic pro producer pack or master pack that i do offer that's additional that's like a bunch of presets and channel strips and video tutorials that i've actually made and like made precise for music producers mixing engineers for logic pro you can pick that up but it's free to get the session template and the tutorial right there in the description and of course this video is free so if you liked it drop a comment like it and share it that's all that I care about. Till next time. Peace, guys.